specifically. Um, and De'Eric King, I mean, so far, you know, this year, what, six touchdowns, you know, no, no interceptions at all. Uh, so we're not turning over the ball. Um, what, uh, you know, just 66% completion. I mean, I mean, everything, it just seems like our offense is just like night and day from, you know, from last year. It's just the offense is just rolling. We're loaded at running back. Um, I mean, we don't have, we don't have, a, I, I would say, a, a starting, you know, like wide receiver that we can consistently go to. But I feel like that with, with Brevin Jordan and Will Mallory and, and the other pieces with the run game, I don't really feel like that we really necessarily need one. I mean, we're spreading the ball a lot. So just a, just a total change on offense from, from uh, you know, from last year within the first three games. It, it's amazing to watch. It really is, man. Like I, I, I was just sitting there on Saturday and at every play, I'm like, oh my God, like what? I don't know this team. Like I, this, these are not my hurricanes. And like, I love it. I love this team so much. They have put faith back within me. They have reinstilled my faith, not just in the canes, but in God. Um, but <laughs> I want to, I want the receivers that they, I don't know how many drops they had. Um, and it surprised me because Harley isn't usually the guy who, you know, has, uh, you know, problems with that. I don't, at least I don't think, but I think he had like three drops on Saturday. And did Jeremiah Payton, did he played, correct? Yeah, he caught a touchdown from uh, Cozy at the end. Yeah. I thought that was, I thought no, that was, that was, that was, that was, that was Michael, Michael Redding. Redding. Oh, it was. Oh, yep, then yeah. I don't, uh, okay, my bad. Um I, did play but i i didn't hear his name yeah i don't think i i don't think i heard his name at all to be honest yeah i, yeah, I don't know and so the receivers i'd say i who would have thought that our biggest issue on offense right now isn't our offensive line it's our wide receivers i never thought would that i would i mean i was kind of saying that all off season <laughs> yeah <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's I mean, crazy that it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like anybody that wears a U on their helmet, I'm always going to support them. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's those are their canes. But like, I feel like, in my opinion, going forward, that any time that Pope drops a ball, whether it's, you know, when they, whether it's on the, you know, the, the punt return, uh, you know, muffin punts, or whether he's dropping passes um, while we're on offense, whatever the case is. I, I honestly, I think it falls on Manny Diaz at this point because I feel like that we have so many, we have so many like athletes on our team where Pope should not be the singular option to go back there to return punts. I mean, we have so many other guys out there. So, I mean, I'm just going to say that this, going forward, you know, you can't blame Pope anymore. It's got to be Manny Diaz, the head coach. He's got to make the, he's got to make the decision to say, you know what, we got all these other athletes. Let's give somebody else a shot. I mean, because I'm telling you right now, going into Clemson, and I know that you guys moving forward will, will get into that. But moving forward, turnovers like that against Clemson, you lose a ball game. I mean, mm-hmm. if you're, you know, wide open passes, you know, that, that Harley and Hope have been dropping, you know, for whether it's 20, 30, 40 yards, you're dropping those, that, that, that could be that, – that can right there cost us the, the game against Clemson because I, I highly doubt that they're going to be making this, that, those types of mistakes. So – yeah, I mean, yeah. elite elite teams like that don't make those mistakes. They they right. just don't like they don't fumble two punt returns in the first three games. That's not yeah. good. Yeah, well, well, Travis, I don't I don't know if you've seen this yet, but I was just telling Marsh um, before we called our first guest in, uh, Bovada, the sports betting company, they updated their Heisman odds, and the Eric King is sitting atop the leaderboard with the best odds to win Heisman. So I, I would like if you, uh, you know, give me your reaction to that or your thoughts on De'Ara King and his performance so far. I mean, honestly, I mean, so far, I mean, he deserves it because, you know, he doesn't have the, you know, like, you know, like uh, Tras from Florida where, you know, he's throwing, you know, whatever. I, for, I forget how many yards he was, three, four, five hundred yards, whatever. But like <laughs> King doesn't need that because he, he's. He's so smart with the football. He doesn't make many mistakes. Now, I know he has, you know, overthrown some balls and that, that should have been, you know, placed a little bit better. But he's just a smart quarterback. He's very efficient. 
and he knows when to run. He knows when to, um, you know, when to just tuck it and go. You know, it, he's just – I mean, it doesn't surprise me at all. He, he's a very efficient quarterback. He's really good. And, you know, if he keeps this up throughout the, throughout the year, I mean, why not? Why not, King? Yeah. That's what I can say. Why not? I'm with you, man. That's, I, 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 the fact that we are have gone from Jaron Williams to a potential Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, I, I'm, I'm just so blown away, and I'm so happy right now. Like I can't even express how happy. I just wish we had him for his entire college career. Yeah, I agree. And, and Marsh, I, you know, I actually I read your tweet about 30 minutes ago. And, and, and it really stuck with me when you had said, you know, think about um, where we were in December of last year. And yeah. that just goes to show you that with the right offensive coordinator, with the, the talent that we had already had, that just goes to show you right there that, you know, things can turn very, very fast. I mean, we were literally six and seven last year losing to dumpster juice ass teams. <laughs> and, you know, now. It's like, you know, you look at our you look at our offense, and it's like, holy shit! Like, it's just what a turn from from December until now. You know, it's it's crazy. It's 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 so awesome. It's so it's amazing just to think about where we were at on that game, uh, you know, against Louisiana Tech. But Trav, so last question for you because we got to get through a bunch of people. Let's hear your prediction for the Clemson game. Early prediction. Okay. Um, you know, I, I'm, I kind of fall with, with uh, you know, with you and Jordan on your takes because I'm a realist too. I, I do think that, that Miami's going to lose the game. Um, but for me personally, I'm already expecting that. I just wanted a competitive game. So, and with those two offenses going, I think that Miami is going to score on them. Um, I think if I had to pick, I would probably say right now, I'm going to go with 42 to 35 Clemson. Okay. See, I'd be really happy with that. I'd, I'd feel good about that game. Yeah. I think, it, like, I mean, we're, we're going to say this phrase a hundred times within the next two weeks. It's a measuring stick game. Like, yeah. we, want, we want to see how close or how far we are from the best that college football has to offer. And, yeah. You I know, agree. And I'll, and I'll tell you, and I'll, and I'll leave on this note, if – and I say if we beat Clemson, Twitter might as well go ahead and put me in Twitter jail because I'm going to go the F off. <laughs> oh, I mean, you, you have no idea, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it, dude. They're going to have to put all of us in Twitter jail. They're just going to have to make a new app for, for Miami Twitter. <laughs> awesome. Okay, thank you so much for coming on, Travis. Hope you're doing well, brother. Thank you. I, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you again. You guys have a good night. Yes, you, thanks, you too, brother. Take care. Go Canes. Cool, man. Dude, that was – I'm so excited. I, I don't know how to feel about Clemson. I'm just like – I feel like I'm about to go on a date. You know, I feel like I have a date with the with the hot girl that I've been trying to, to get, <laughs> notice me forever, you know? <laughs> That's a perfect, perfect analogy. Yeah. Oh, I feel like I matched with the hot girl on Tinder. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's like, oh gosh, we got oh, this in two weeks. She might ghost me. You know, who knows if it'll even be good? Yeah. Okay, is Leo ready? Um, yeah, he's ready in just a few minutes. Um, yeah, let me call him in. Love the reaction show. Yeah, this is going well, dude. Big fan. Okay, so um, our next guest, Leo, uh, we're going to call him back in a little bit, but uh, he, he stepped out for a second. But, but we're going to call our guy Jay. Um, everyone loves Jay, right? Mm-hmm. Jay on the show. So, All right. Um, let me dial him in real quick. What's good, boys? Jay, what's good, bro? <laughs> what's going on, man? How are we feeling? I'm feeling too good right now, bro. Honestly, like I'm on that, I'm over that line that I never get to. <laughs> I, I, I'm way I, over the line right like, now. I'm, I, I'm like so happy and excited, but it's not like I'm like I'm hyped. I'm just 
content, bro. I've, I'm like, I'm, I'm on a high right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, bro. Like, I'm too good. I'm not going to lie. What's up? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, so you made the trip down. I, had, yes. I You made the last second trip down. How was it? Yes. Well, let me go ahead and tell my quick story, bro, for anybody who didn't see it on Twitter. My homie hits me up and says that he'll help me with the ticket. He'll give me a good price. He's like, the only condition is you got to do what you do on Twitter to my friends. Because both of his friends was uh, Florida State fans. I'm like, bro, I was going to do that regardless, and I don't even know them, bro. So <laughs> I'm glad you gave me permission because I'm about to go off. So we get to the game. You know, I meet them in a the parking lot at the Walmart by the stadium. Mm-hmm. I introduce myself. You know what I'm saying? I want to make sure I get cool with them so that it's not bad and we don't fight in the stands when I get to level 10 because I already knew it was coming, bro. So we cool, and he starts telling me that there's this one taller one. He's like, he's the one who does all the talking. So he's like, I would pay to sit next to y'all just to see it because we have to split up. So we was in the end zone side. They was on the other side. So first quarter, I'm going off. And they get their little drive. Where, you know, that opening drive they had, it was nice. So I told them, same thing I said on Twitter. I was like, Norvell texted y'all 15 plays, and y'all wasted on one drive and got a field goal, bro. I said, as soon as y'all got to play football, it's about to get ugly. They thought I was playing, bro. Time we got a first down, I was talking. So they did that for one drive. By the end of the first quarter, they didn't want to sit by me no more, bro. <laughs> they did not want to sit by me. One of them sat down and bought, he left at one point and bought me a pizza to make peace because I was not chilling, bro. <laughs> 38 3 at halftime. This man hands me a pizza and goes and sits down in another row. <laughs> I was going off. Bro. Like, I do this. I really do this, bro. You don't want to go with me. But yeah, the game was lit. The game was fire, bro. Uh, oh, man. Man, okay, so was. Was it even more than you were expecting? Because it, it, like, they exceeded my expectations. I was expecting 31 10, 38 10. I thought it was going to be a little sloppy at first, but th- it was never even in question. We beat their ass. Like, I've never seen before. I was, I don't know. I think I'm kind of where everybody else was. Until you see it, it's still in that we've been here before phase where we've been hyped. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Logically, I had no doubt if we're going just off of logistics. Because I said, I've been waiting. Everything I've asked for, Manny took care of. Which is why, by the way, everybody who doubted Manny owed me an apology personally. Because I was going <laughs> to slant it on Twitter. But yeah. he knows his mistakes. They were saying, Manny can't coach. I said, no, bro. All we needed was an offensive coordinator who knows yep. what he's doing. Good quarterback play, like I told y'all the first week when I hopped on here. Good quarterback play, which King has given us. Yep. And, I mean, everything else he's taking care of, the little, the little things that we needed. So, going into the game, I didn't really have no doubts. I'm thinking, you know, it could be that little rivalry where they keep it closer than it should be. But once the game got started, mm-hmm. after that first drive, I'm like, bro, it's about to get ugly. It's really yeah. about to get ugly if y'all don't do something quick. And, mm-hmm. I mean, the D, what the D-line did, they made everybody's job easier that game. It, I felt like that's what really took everything out. Yeah, yeah. and – and I want to echo what you're saying and credit to all the coaches, you know, because cause yeah. we had gone after the UAB game and I had a lot of stuff to say, especially about the defense. And, you know, I, I really I implored the defense to get better and they have each week, even though we gave up 500 plus yards. I thought we looked better. I, th- I thought we were more stout against Louisville. I thought we were making smarter plays. You know, we didn't look as soft. Um, and then, you know, on uh you know, against FSU, we looked even better. Like we looked great. I, I still think we have an issue in the middle. Um, like we're, but we're just gonna have to game plan around that. Uh, but we're, but we're looking good. We're improving. We look cohesive. And dude, we're just tight as a team. We look good right now. I agree with that 100. percent And I was gonna say, I was gonna say it for later in case I had questions. But I'll say this now. What you said about the middle is exactly what I feel. Like I'm not. I won't say I'm necessarily scared, but I haven't seen nobody take it. You know what I'm saying? To like, yeah. okay, he's that guy. Because the first week you said, who do you trust? There's nobody in the middle yet that I'm saying, I got him no matter what. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not worried about him at all. And after watching, I watched a little bit of that Florida game and seeing what 51 was doing. I don't mm-hmm. like giving Florida credit, but that's what I need one, at least one person to do, just step up and take over a game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. outside of that, I'm I'm pretty content with it. Hey, I got to, uh, I, I got two questions that I want your opinions on. Yeah, first, dude is um the receivers bro we got we we keep dropping balls man harley couldn't catch a thing pope couldn't catch what are your thoughts on the receivers because i'm a i'm i'm very underwhelmed at them bro y'all want me to go first 
Yep. Hell yeah.